So as you can see behind me, or if you read the title of this video, today we are going to make this vortex thingy in Blender. It's fairly simple, so it shouldn't take us too much time. It is fully procedural, so it means with just few tweaks you can change the way it looks, depending on whatever you go for. We can even have this sort of glassy lava kind of thing, or whatever you feel like doing with it. Uh, feel free to experiment. Also, stuff like different color scheme or different uh, interpolation even can give you more stylized look. But instead of talking about it, how about I just show you how it's done? So let's try to speed run through it. So we open Blender, delete everything as usual, and then we add a mesh cylinder to our scene. Now let's delete the top cap and the bottom cap, click M to collapse it so that we have this upside down cone. Then we take the outer edge and extrude it. Then we take this edge and make it more smooth, Control b to bevel, give it a little bit more resolution so we have a nice smooth transition, and then right click, shade smooth, and voila, there you go. This sort of upside down wizard hat is the geometry for our vortex basically. Uh, one more very important thing to keep in mind so that you don't write a comment later that hey, this doesn't work for me, is to go into edit mode again, Click A to select everything and then go into the side view and make sure that you move the mesh itself above the pivot point. So this orange dot in the 0, 0, 0 position of our world is our pivot point. Just make sure that your mesh is above that one. It's very important because we will use a texture coordinates object which uh, depends on it. So if you set everything up correctly, you should have something like this. And then let's drag in a new screen which we will turn into shader editor, click new to create a new material, which is going to be vortex, obviously. Then we delete the principal BSDF because we don't need that. And in our viewport, let's switch to the shader preview so we can see what we're actually doing. And now, as I promised, texture coordinates is the first node that we're going to use. More specifically, the object output of this node. Object out like this. And we need to add a mapping node. Now let's preview this one and we see a nice texture coordinates on our object. And now the goal to get this uh, vortex is basically twisted around the Z axis. So if we do that in the mapping rotation, you can see that we are twisting, but we're twisting everything equally. That's not ideal, obviously. Uh, what we want to do is we want to twist the middle more so than the edges so that we have this uh, well vortex effect. So in order to do that, we need another texture coordinates. We could use the same, but then uh, the spaghetti could get a bit entangled. So let's just make it more clear for ourselves. So the second texture coordinates, we also use the object, drag it out, and then use a vector math. But instead of add, we will use a divide. And then let's add a value node, change the value to one. And instead of manipulating those three uh, separately, we can just connect this value and this will do this for us. So whatever we set here, we can imagine is being set up here, here and here as well. So we do it like that. If we preview this, then we can see it's uh, basically the same as this one. But don't worry about it now, uh, soon it all will make sense. So as we said, we need to rotate the center more so than the edges. And in order to do that, uh, we need a mask. So let's look for a gradient texture and connect it right after the divide and change it from linear to spherical and that is the mask that we need but right now we can see that this spherical mask is uh, quite small and as you remember i mentioned that it's very important the object is above the pivot point because again we're using texture coordinates object and this is being drawn from the object pivot point so from here that's why it was very important. So if you felt like rebel and didn't do it, well, now is the time to go back and actually do it. And now in order to make this spherical mask uh, bigger so that it can encompass more of our uh, mesh, that is why we have this divide node in here. As we increase the value, we can see that this mask is simply being getting bigger. So let's extend it to something like this so that it doesn't take the whole space, but uh, we can have a little bit of uh, margin in here. And now in order to control the gradient, so like the transition, uh, from the bright to the dark, we can add a math node right after the gradient texture and set it to power. Now, as we increase the exponent of the power node, you can see that the gradient gets softer and softer. And this may not make uh, sense right away, but this exactly is going to control our twisting amount. Because as you remember, we want to twist it on the Z axis, but this is going to allow us to twist it more in the center and less on the edges because black is zero or less, and then 
uh, white is basically one or higher number. So you don't have to see it as a uh, black and white texture, but rather like a bunch of points with different values. So if we just take this, uh, this value output of this power node and connect it into rotation Z, uh, you can see what's going on. And in order to do that, we need a combine XYZ node, which is going to take three numbers and combine it into a vector. So we take this power output and plug it into the combine XYZ Z value. Uh, the X and Y can stay as zero, doesn't matter. And then you plug the combine XYZ into the rotation. And now when we preview this mapping node, voila, you can see that we have a little bit of twisting going on. And now if you want to have more twisting, obviously we need to increase the values that are here. So let's copy this power node and plug it in between uh, the power and the combine XYZ. Uh, let's keep this one on preview. And then instead of power, we want a multiply. So we just multiply all the values. And then as you multiply it, you can see that the twisting gets more and more intense. So this will basically control uh, the amount of twist that we have. And then the first value node that goes into the divide controls the area that is being twisted. So I hope it's uh, quite clear for now. That's actually a pretty nice lollipop texture. Maybe idea for another tutorial. Let's keep it quite uh, small, maybe like like this. And so if we already have this uh, texture coordinates, like so, all there is uh, is basically find a noise texture and plug it right after this mapping node. Now we don't need color, we want a factor, but between factor we also need a color ramp so that we can uh, give it our own colors. Now one thing to do, uh, which I found very useful and you might as well, is add a vector math node in between the texture coordinates and the mapping node that we have from the beginning of our video. Just plug it in between and change it from add to normalize, which may not seem important, but I just found this to be much easier to work with. And so I just have this noise texture um, to take care of if I want to change uh, basically how my, how my vortex looks like. So let's set up some colors. Uh, I'll probably go for the uh, fiery look that I had in the intro segment of this video but feel free to make something of your own. So we have the colors set up. Uh, it's a little bit different, but I don't really care. Uh, you can spend way more time in here if you want. And so in order to animate this, we will need a value node. And the way we animate this is we simply change the location Z value. As you can see, as it gets smaller, this vertex is uh, turning and being sucked in. So the same thing as we did here, we need a combine XYZ, value goes into Z, and then combine XYZ goes into location, just so it's more clear. I mean, technically we could just put in driver in here, but I feel like this is uh, more clear as in what's happening. So we put in a, a hashtag frame divided by 50, which is a value I found useful for me, but and as you can see, it's going a little bit to the wrong direction. So in order to revert it, you just type in a minus in front of that, which is going to reverse it. And yeah, now it's now it's fine. And yeah, if you want to change the look of it, uh, play with those values that I was talking about before, like yeah, this value or uh, this power to change the, the amount of twisting and how it uh, blends in with the non-twisting. Feel free to experiment is basically what I'm saying. I think I'll leave it at something like this. And then this noise texture is uh, defining how this overall uh, thing looks like. So you can like add a distortion to make it more like a liquid glass thingy or add a, you know, like roughness and like lower the scale. So we have more grainy look to it. And then everything that's left is basically position your camera in a nice way. And voila, there is your vertex. If you made it this far to the video, congratulations. You're among like the 5%, the elite 5% of YouTube that make it to the end of my video. So congratulations. And also as a reward for staying this long, if you don't feel like making this yourself, I will just upload uh, my source file on my Gumroad. So feel free to pick it up there. So take care and see you in the next one.